All right. Welcome to Light of the World Ministries. This is Chaplain Bob. This is uh, March of 2017. Today is actually the Sabbath day, the first Sabbath of March. So I figured, well, March is Women's History Month. So let's do a little study on a woman in the Bible. Her name is Deborah. Yes, I know Paul says that women should keep silent in the church. But Deborah was a prophetess. She was a female prophet of the Lord. And she was also a judge, which was a civil ruler. So that is something. I'll tell you what. Now, the book of Judges takes up where, well, let's do a little background. In the book of Exodus, you had Joseph and his brothers. They had the famine. They all went to Egypt. And then a new rulers arose in Egypt, and they enslaved the Hebrews, the Israelites, not the Israelis, the Israelites. And... Then the Lord rose up Moses, and he was God's prophet and lawgiver. So he took Israel out of the land, instituted the first Passover, and then after he saw the land that God had promised Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, he was not allowed to enter into it because of sin. Well, then his, I guess you could say like a protege, jo, uh, Joshua, he took over Joshua and Caleb. They were the ones, they were ten, uh, two of the 12 spies that spied out the land. And they were the only ones that came up with a good report because there were giants in the land. And you got these idiots that'll tell you, well, you know, giants in Genesis 6, they come from believers and non-believers having, getting married and having children. Yeah. And then they have giants with six fingers and six toes. I mean, after all, believers and unbelievers, when they get married, they always have children with giants that are six fingers and six toes, don't they? That's the kind of idiocy that uh, people push today. And if you're interested in where the giants came from, sons of God, all that good stuff, Genesis 6, I've got an entire playlist, probably 15 hours of studying. And when you get done, you will know the sons of God in the Old Testament, when you read Job 38, refers to the fallen, well, refers to angels. Some are fallen, some were not. Okay? In Job 38, the sons of God shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. Adam didn't come into existence until six days after the earth was created. Therefore, the sons of God, plural, had to have existed before the earth. And ask yourself this question. When, in the days of creation, in Genesis, chapters 1 and 2, when, what day were the earth, angels created? It's not, they're not mentioned. The earth was. The earth was created, you know, trees, fish, birds, animals. What day were the angels created? They're not even mentioned. So... They had to have existed prior to the earth. So if you're interested, you can read that out. Now, the giants were family, one of the families of the Canaanites. They were the Philistines, but not all the Canaanites were giants. So, after 
Moses brings out Israel out of the Egypt. Joshua takes over, takes them into the promised land. Well, the book of Judges takes off where Joshua is dead. We're going to skip around a little bit because I don't want to make this an entire uh, study on the book of Judges. Now, if you're not familiar with the book of Judges, there was a guy named Samson. Perhaps you've heard of him. He was one of the judges of the book of Judges. But Deborah came before him. So, all right, let's go to, so that's a little bit of background. You know, Moses takes Israel out of Egypt. Joshua takes over, takes them actually into the promised land. And then after Joshua dies, well, then it's the book of Judges. They were the ones leading Israel. Okay, Judges chapter 1, verse 1. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Kenites first to fight against them? You know, it's funny, the uh, people that say that the um, sons of God of Genesis 6 were just, you know, good believers, right? You know, and, uh, you know, and then when you get to the book of Judges, you know, you got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Then came the book of Joshua. And God commanded Israel with Joshua to exterminate all the Canaanites. And yet there are many Bible teachers that want you to believe that when believers marry unbelievers and they have these giants with six fingers and six toes, that God wants them all wiped out. Right. Not, not that they were satanic hybrids. No, don't believe that. After all, you know, we're the, 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 the Bible teachers that tell you this garbage want you to believe. Well, they want you to just, you know, read John 3.16. That's all you need. Just, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah, well, that's true. But Jesus also told people, ye believe not because... You're not of my sheep. So God told Israel to exterminate the Canaanites, but they didn't do it. Matter of fact, a lot of times they intermarried with them. All right, so. So they asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, Ooh, well, wait a minute here. Uh, Judah had a brother, Simeon. Actually, Judah had 11 brothers. And, uh, you know, they want you to think today that the Jews, people call themselves Jews, which is a con slang of Judah, that, you know, they're the only ones that exist, you know. But, hey, there's 11 other tribes, people. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I will likewise go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him, and Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew of them in Bezek, 10,000 men. Slew, S-L-E-W. That means they killed them. And they found Abana Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against them, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. So, you know, let's see, verse 6. But Abana Bezek fled, and they pursued after him and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Aban Abani Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table, as I have done. So God hath requited me, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. 
So why do they cut off their thumbs and their big toes, the great toe? Well, that's simple. Back in those days, um, well, you know, if you had an army, it'd be awful hard to hold a sword without a thumb, you know? You know I mean, it'd be really hard. I mean, it'd be easy to knock it out of somebody's hand. And if you don't have your big toe, well, it's a lot more difficult to keep your balance. It'd be easier to knock them over. So that's why they cut off their thumbs and toes. The big toes, anyways. You know, that's just in case you were wondering why they did that. Uh, verse 8. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem. Ooh. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem and had taken it and smitten it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. You see, the Canaanites, when Israel went into the land, the Canaanites were already there. They were basically Satan's children, and they knew, Satan knew that they were going to you know, God was going to give Israel the land, so he sent his children there to fight against them. But Jerusalem was a city of the Canaanites. And the children of Judah took it, and they killed everybody with the edge of the sword, and they set the city on fire. So Jerusalem originally was already a built city, and Judah had to take it. Verse 9. And afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain and in the south and in the valley. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kirjath Tabarbara. I don't know. I, I guess I should spend more time on these Hebrew names, but, you know. And they slew Shishai and Ahiman and Talmai. Um, so, no, oh, here we go. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir before was Kirjashifer. And Caleb said, so evidently um, Joshua and Caleb, Joshua died, but Caleb's still alive. And Caleb said, he that smiteth, or strikes, or takes, oh, okay, and he that smiteth Kirjaf Siphir, and taketh it, to him will I give Asa, Aksa, my daughter, to wife. Now, a lot of people condemn the Bible for the old days because, you know, they, a lot of times they did arranged marriages. But, you know, growing up young, I'd seen so many women pick, pick a guy based solely on his parents' bank account. And I saw girls in high school that would date guys just because they had a nice car. Um, boy, is that a disaster waiting to happen. You know, and then they get pregnant and, they, you know, have a kid and get married. And then, you know, before, before they're 21 years old, they're already divorced. You know, parents that have lived for, you know, a while... They know the growing up with children and, and growing up with your neighbors. You know what kind of kids they are, their temperaments. You know, I think fathers would know a good choice for a daughter. I mean, just because a guy's good looking and his family's got money, a girl would be attracted to that. But a father would be like, man, this guy, he might have money and he might be good looking, but he's a womanizer. You know, he'll never be faithful to you, uh, you know. And, you know, you better believe the fathers, most of the time, I'm sure, are going to listen to what the daughter says. You know, if the daughter says, no, 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 Dad, I don't, I don't want to be married to him. There's some things I know about him that you don't know. You know, come on, you know, father would listen, you know. And... Um, 
these stupid so-called atheists that are really Satanists, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, uh, they always bring up these points and try to make you think that arranged marriage is a horrible thing. But, you know, both parents would have to agree, and both the kids. You know, they didn't take a kid and force him at, you know, at the edge of a sword and say, you're going to marry this girl. Well, unless they got him pregnant. If you got him pregnant, all bets were off. You were married. That's the Bible law. However, if the uh, father did not want the man who got his daughter pregnant, um, he wasn't obligated to have him as a husband. But, you know, they were, um, if both, you know, if he wanted her to, him to be her husband or whatever and take care of her and the kid, you know, that was his, that was his prerogative under the law. And I'm so sick of, Hearing people believing the garbage that's on TV, but they don't believe the Bible. You know, I, I've got family members that are like that. But, you know, hey, uh, America's about to find out. I don't know how long. I don't know if I'll be here. But um, the Bible wanted us to have a just weights and balance system. When you were selling your goods, let's say you were selling fruit by the pound that you had grown in your orchard, they didn't want you to have two sets of scales, one light, one heavy. And they wanted you to have a fair balance system. If you're selling somebody five pounds, sell them five pounds, not three pounds in seven ounces, no. You know, that's what God wanted. America used to have a just weights and just balances. And money was to be gold and silver. And that was actually written in the Constitution of the United States. And it came from the Bible. And that's where our balance and weights system came into being. God wants equity. He wants us to be Treat everybody equally with justice. But America doesn't want to do this anymore. They got rid of the gold and silver. Now we have paper money. Eventually, it will go to the mark of the beast. And the Christians of this country, they don't know it yet, but they're marked for destruction. And God's going to allow it to happen. Because they don't, Christians, so-called church people, whatever, they don't honor God. They really don't. You know, they, they wonder, why is there so much crime? Do you know in 1960, I was arguing with a guy at work, well, not really arguing, but discussing about how little crime there was back when I was little. I grew up in Miami. And he looked up on the Internet and in 1960, I was a real tiny child back then, but in 1960, there was less than 1,000 murders in the entire United States. Population was probably about 150 uh, million back then. Granted, the population's doubled today, but now there's like 12 to 15,000 murders. Of course, the United States was mostly white Anglo-Saxon Protestant back in those days, in 1960. But that's racist to bring that up, right? But, uh, you know, now we're, Miami's flooded with third world aliens, all kinds of crime. But the thing is, my point is, back then, if you committed a murder, the government put you to death just like the Bible said to do. That was Bible law. A murderer should be put to death by the mouth of two or three witnesses. And if the witnesses committed perjury, they were to be put to death if they tried to frame somebody for a capital crime. You would think twice 
three times before you would perjure yourself, knowing full well that if you were caught lying, you were going to be killed by trying to frame somebody else for a capital crime, like murder. God's laws work. It's just we don't want them. And I'm not talking about the temple ceremonial laws where the, the Jews want to rebuild their temple and burn animals. I'm not talking about that. Those laws were done away with on the cross. They were paid in full. But the civil government laws, the agricultural laws, uh, laws about, you know, how to treat the land, your crops, how to treat your animals, uh, monetary, economic laws, the trade laws. Do you know the health and diet laws? Do you know the Bible said to wash your hands in running water? Do you really think those laws were done away with? Really? Then don't wash your hands anymore. So, I, mean, I know I'm getting off target. But the point is, back in the old days, parents would help choose spouses for their children, for their daughters and for their husbands. So Caleb said, he that takes the city, I'm going to give him, you know, my daughter to wife. And I'm sure the daughter had her eyes on a couple of, you know, maybe a guy or something and said, hey, my father says, you know, you take the city, I'm, I'm your wife. Why don't you, you know, take some strong soldiers and go, you know, wipe it out. So, uh, let's see, verse 13. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Ashash, his daughter, to wife. Hmm. You know, people will say, oh, that's terrible, that's terrible. You know, arranged marriages. I bet you she was happy. So, did the, in the Bible, did they really, um, were women unimportant? Let's see. Verse 14. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted off from, uh, and she lighted from off her ass. No, we're not talking about her bottom. We're talking about her, uh, a donkey, right? But I still thought, you know, first time I read that, I thought it was funny. And she lighted from off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wilt thou? You know, so her his daughter comes, she gets off her ass, and uh, Caleb asks her, yeah, What will you? You know, what what are you, what's going on? You know, what are you doing? Or how you doing? You know, what's up? What's up, daughter? And she said unto him, so she's asking her dad, Give me a blessing, for thou, ha thou hast given me a southland. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. You know, basically she's saying, Hey, you gave me you gave me some land, but you know, it's no good without any water, Dad. Come on, give me some water. So Caleb gave her upper springs and the nether, which means lower, you know. Upper and lower springs. So, you know, dad doesn't care about daughters. Well, Caleb did, you know. And you got to realize something. God gave Israel the land and told them to utterly destroy the Canaanites. And you got Bible teachers that will tell you, oh, well, those were just the children of unbelievers. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's no wonder the uh, church is in a satanic mess today. Uh, let's see. All right, verse 16. And the children of the Kenite Moses' father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lieth in the south of Arad, and they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that had ha inhabited Ziphath, and utterly destroyed it. And the name of the city was called Hormah. And Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Ashkelon with the coast thereon, and Ekron with the coast thereon. 
Hmm. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said, and he expelled thence the three sons of Anak. Anak was giants, people. Look up Anak in the Bible, and you will see Anak was giants. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. Hmm. The Jebusites were one of the tribes of the Canaanites. So you better believe when the children of Benjamin lived with the Jebusites, you better believe some of the men looked at some of those beautiful girls and decided, hmm, I want a wife. And they intermarried. And this is early on, people. This is Judges. You're talking Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. You're only talking seven books in the Bible. You haven't gone anywhere yet. I mean, this is, they haven't even set up, this is before King David. All right, so let's skip ahead here. Verse 29. Neither did Ephraim. Ephraim was one of the uh, children of Joseph. Remember, he was. They were, they're part of the tribes, twelve tribes. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer, among them. So, God commanded that they exterminate them, and they didn't do it, and they married them you don't believe it, read the book of Ezra and read the book of Nehemiah. All right, let's go to chapter 2, verse 1. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Now, this first, I don't know if you remember this from school, but, you know, this angel's talking in the first person. He said he made his covenant with them. But the Bible says God made his covenant with them, which is a reason why a lot of people think that when, um, many times when it says an angel of the Lord or the angel of the Lord, they're talking about Christ in his pre-human form. But that in and of itself is an entire Bible study. And not all the angels of the Lord were Christ. Um, but, but here he's talking, this angel of the Lord, an angel means messenger. This angel of the Lord is talking in the first person. He says, and I said, I will never break my covenant with you. But God said he made the covenant. So this angel of the Lord, is he part of the Godhead? I think so, but I'm just pointing this out. I'm not saying I'm right, wrong, whatever. So, And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and ye shall make no league. What's a league? It's a covenant. It's a promise. It's a, an agreement. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. Do you know the United States has numerous churches of Satan all over the place? You know, we should be, Christians should rise up and destroy these things, but they won't do it. So let's read the solution. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. He said this, well, he first God said he was going to drive them out. Now he says he's not. Why? Because they were disobedient. God did not break the covenant. The covenant was everlasting. 
it was Israel that broke the covenant. You know, a contract's a two-way street. If, if I tell you I'm going to sell you my car for so much money, you give me a down payment, and you don't make the, the rest of the payments, you broke, you broke the agreement. You broke the contract. You broke the covenant. Well, that's what Israel did. They started, but they didn't finish. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. Don't you, do you, do you notice that they put a crown of thorns on Christ's head. And what did they do? They pierced his side, didn't they? And their God shall be a snare unto you. What's a snare? It's a trap. Use snares to kill, trap and kill animals so that you can eat them or what have you. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voice and wept. They cried. And they called the name of that place Bochim, B-O-C-H-I-M, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath-er-Heres, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. Okay, so now we're getting to the meat. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute. I skipped a verse. I'm sorry. Verse 10. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. So here it is, all the old people, like me, who'd seen all the miracles of the Lord, died. But the kids, they didn't see it. So... They don't care. And the children of Israel did evil, evil, in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Balaam. Balaam was a false god, probably a devil, one of Satan's generals. Or maybe Satan himself, I don't know. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. Oh yeah, you want to serve Satan? No problem. God will let you do it. But when the blessings turn into a curse, you'll know why. Which is happening to America, people. Why do you think the jobs have left the United States? Why do you think our land is flooded with heathen aliens who hate Jesus? Why do you think our land is flooded with people that hate the children of Adam? Why? God's wrath is kindled against the United States and Europe, the European Union. I mean, the time of trouble of Matthew 24, it's getting, it's, it's getting close. It's getting closer. I don't know if I'll see it. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, another 50 years, if, if it lasts that long, I don't know. Time of trouble is coming, people. Verse 12. And they, Israel... 
And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, the Canaanites, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth is the goddess. She goes by many names. Her name is Ishtar. Some people call her Easter. Uh, Lilith. The Shekinah. Oh yeah. They're teaching the Shekinah. They call the Holy Spirit the goddess in some of these Hebrew roots, so-called groups. The Jews. Uh, these so-called Messianic Jews. Goes by many different names. Diana. You know, it's all the same. Verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. Do you know what a spoiler is? Take a piece of meat and stick it out in the sun for a couple days and tell me if it's spoiled. It's rotten. And he delivered them in the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Ooh, and that's gonna that's gonna happen to America. We're being sold into the hands of our enemies. So that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Whithsoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them. The hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges. Judges, civil rulers. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges. Now, what's a judge? A judge decides between a controversy between two people. Isn't that what a lawsuit's all about? You get two people, you know, one guy says, hey, I loan, lend, lent this guy money, and he didn't pay me. And the other guy says, you know, whatever. Uh, no, he didn't lend me money, or, or he cheated me in this business dealing, and that's why I didn't pay him. Or, You know, a, a judge decides a controversy. And a judge was to stand in the place of God. They were to judge righteousness not take bribes, which the Bible calls gifts. You know, rich people give bribes to judges, and they cheat poor people out of everything. And, the, you know, you heard the saying, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Well, that's where it comes from, people. But that's what a judge was. They were to stand in, in, instead of, in God's stead, instead of God, and make righteous rulings. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken, or hear, and yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring, like a whore, but they went a whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. Ooh. This is this is the thing, people. When Israel got fat and happy, they turned away from the Lord. And the Lord raised up people against them. And when they had a belly full of their enemies, they bowed themselves down, they repented, and they honored the Lord, and the Lord delivered them. And then, after the Lord delivered them, they got fat and happy again. They forgot the Lord, and the Lord raised up enemies. It's, it's a cycle, people. And it, it all throughout the book of Judges, that is the thing. And what happened to America? America got fat and happy. They threw Christ out of the public schools. The Bible 
and prayer in Jesus' name was in American elementary, uh, well, all American schools for over 200 years. The American Bible Society was created by Congress. The Congress of the United States under the direction of the president, Washington. They took federal money and printed and distributed Bibles. I'm not sure. I believe they were King James. I'm not sure. It could have been Geneva. I'm not sure. But the Congress in the United States printed Bibles, created the American Bible Society, and they distributed Bibles to schools. I remember when I was in elementary school, we had prayer in Jesus' name, and we read the Bible for over 200 and something years. That's what America was all about. You know, a thousand murders in the entire country. Now there's 12 to 15,000 murders in the country. Chicago. Um, I call it a derogatory uh, word starts with an S, four-lettered S word. Um, when you go to the bathroom, I call it S Chicago. You know, that's what I call. It. Well, whatever. Chicago alone had 762 murders last year. Do you know Chicago alone had almost the number of murders that the United States had as in the entire country in 1960? What happened? They kicked Christ out of the schools. Oh, we got to have separation of church and state. They should have taken the judges that did that, the Supreme Court so-called judges, and hung them. The Christians should have, with rifles in hand and a rope in the other, and hung them. How dare you try to destroy our children? And look at America today gay marriage, uh, sodomites adopting little boys. I mean, really? Satanic church, church, churches of Satan all over the place? You know, this, and, you, and people can't figure out why. Ah. Oh. Verse 18, and when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge, for it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. The Lord doesn't repent of sin. The Lord might repent of judgment, sending something evil against the people for their wickedness. You know, God repented when, when, in the book of um, Jonah, when he went to Nineveh, Nineveh was evil. Jonah told Nineveh to repent of their wickedness and their evil and their sin, and they did. And God repented of the judgment that he was going to send upon them. And people will mix this up and say, well, God repented. But God doesn't repent of sin like we should. We should turn away from our sin. God turns away from doing, bringing evil. You know, if Sodom and Gomorrah would have repented, they would be, probably exist to this day. But they didn't. So God brought fire, you know, rain, fire and brimstone. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people hath transgressed my covenant. What is transgressed? Break. God didn't break the covenant. Israel broke the covenant. Because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. 
that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. God was going to say, oh, I'm going to leave. The, you want? Uh, you don't want to follow my, my ways? No problem. I'm going to leave the devil's children here, the Canaanites, in your land. And they're going to be thorns in your sides. And their gods are going to be a snare unto you, a trap. You don't want you don't want to follow God the Father? No problem. You can have the devil as your ruler. See how you like it. And that's America today, people. Okay, Joshua, I'm sorry, Judges chapter 3. Verse 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least such as before knew nothing thereof, namely the five lords of the Philistines. Now the Philistines, um, that's what David, you've heard David and Goliath, the future king of Israel, well, Goliath was a Philistine. He was a giant. Namely, five lords of the Philistines, and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwell in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon. Baal is the name of the false god, and Hermon is a mountain. To this day, it's in Lebanon. From Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hands of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, and Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives. And they gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. God told Israel, don't marry these people, don't serve their gods, kill them. What did Israel do? Married them. People, they were, the Canaanites were the children, were children of the devils. And the churches won't touch this with a 20-foot theological pole. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served Balaam and the groves. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he sold them, sold them as slaves, right? And he sold them into the hand of Kusharishashtheophim, I can't pronounce it king of Mesopotamia, and the children of Israel served Cushashrishathim eight years. So God gave them into some evil guys thing. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. The Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. So here is the guy that, that uh, married that girl that we talked about earlier. Um, he was the, um, he became the judge, right? A deliverer. The Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel and went out to war and the Lord delivered Kushhar Harishathim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand and his hand prevailed against Kush. Cush Arishathium. And the land had rest forty years, and Othniel the son of Kenaz died. So they were oppressed, they had a deliverer, got fat and happy, now the Lord's going to do it again. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. 
And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, and went and smote Israel, and possessed the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. Huh. Amalek. In the Bible, Amalek was a grandson of Esau. And I might cover it, but I might not. God said in Mal Malachi verse 1 that he aided, hated Esau. Um, sorry, black Hebrews, but um, yeah, Esau was white, but so was Jacob, his brother. Yeah, the black Hebrews say that all white people are the children of Esau that God hated. And, uh, you know, Esau and Jacob, Jacob Israel, were brothers. So if Esau was white, well, so was Jacob Israel. Had to be. But, of course, these so-called black Hebrews, they don't believe that. They think uh, Jacob Israel was black and Esau was white. And they were twins. Figure that one out. But then, then again, what can I tell you? But Amalek was a grandson of Esau that God hated, Malachi 1. And God said that he would have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And church people want you to think, well, you know, um, God changed his mind in John 3.16. Everybody could be saved. Really? Are you sure? All right, here you go. In Exodus chapter 17 and verse 16. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Um, does that sound like Amalek is in a good spot and he's going to be offered salvation? Ugh, that doesn't sound like it. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. To generation. So Amalek was a son of a grandson of Esau, and uh, Esau married into the Canaanite line of the Hittites. And uh, the Lord's not happy with Esau. No. All right. So I could um, keep going here, but I'm not been almost an hour. I gave you some background. When I come back, we're going to do Judges chapter 4, and we're going to start reading about Deborah. After all, it's March 2017. This is Women's History Month. I'm still waiting for a White History Month or a Christian History Month. After all, there's a Women's History Month. Why not a Man's History Month. There's a Jewish History Month. Why not a Christian History Month? And there's a Black History Month. There's a Indian, American Indian, Red History Month. Jewish History Month. Black History Month. Asian History Month. Why is there no White History Month? Good question. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, this is the end. This is part one of uh, Women's History Month. Just giving you some background. We're going to come back and do Deborah, Judges, Chapter 4. All right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the end of part one.